Beauty Coat version 4.5 in the earliest alpha build now has PBR materials as well as PBR viewport shading. And now we can use these environment maps to light our scenes rather than using actual lights. There are only a few unique parameters that you can control for these environment maps. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. They reside under the camera button on the top right hand corner and they're under background. And you can see that we can choose an environment map, we can rotate it, we can also blur and sharpen and so on. Now those rotation tools also happen to be up here on the top bar with this uh, light with an arrow on it. If we click and drag on it, we can rotate it like so. And we can also control the intensity of the environment map with the light bulb icon that's to the left of that one. And for now, that's all we have to control our environment maps. We can, of course, turn them off Enter background, or we can set it to a vertical or just a background image. However, that turns off the effects of the PBR shading in the viewport. And the PBR workflow that 3D Coat is using initially is a glossiness and metalness workflow. And what the metalness lets you do is to specify whether or not something is made of metal or not. And of glossiness, of course, is um, gloss amount or the opposite of roughness. Currently, the glossiness is still named Specular Intensity. That will be changed in the official release build. Let's go ahead and paint something real quick. Now let's make a new layer and hide our leather here. And we'll just continue with this gold. And we'll go with 100. We'll turn depth off. We'll paint color and glossiness. And of course, there's no icon for metalness just yet. Uh, but there is metalness opacity, which you can control right here on the top bar. So. If we go and paint, you can see that we're painting metal, basically. High gloss metal. If we turn down the glossiness there, now we can paint something that's a little more rough. Of course, we can also turn off metalness entirely just by scaling it all the way down to zero. And now we're painting something more akin to a non-conductive material, non-metal. Another cool thing about how you can use these PBR materials is that you can use just about any painting tool inside of 3D Coat. So that means the paintbrush, the airbrush, the pencil, uh, the fill tool, the curve tool here, the curve text tool, and so on. You can also use just about any stroke mode that you can imagine. So you can paint in specific polygons, you can make curve selections, you can make lassos, pretty much anything you can imagine. One of the advantages of using the PBR materials in 3D Code over other systems is that you're not limited to using color ID maps or entire materials or surface materials. You can paint wherever you want that material to be, and you don't have to worry about those kinds of limitations. So for example, say I wanted to paint this bronze material, and I've got my brush here. I want to paint depth, color, gloss, and some metalness. So we'll crank up our metalness there. We'll put the spec intensity right now to 100 as well. And we'll just paint that in. So now we're painting a real bronze material. Like so. And if you rotate around, you can see it's got some uh, metalness and a little bit of gloss to it. But that's not all you can do with it. Like I was saying, you can use these stroke modes. So let's say we want to make a curve. I mean, let's. Let's go ahead and do it. Just make some kind of curve shape. Real quick like. And hit enter. And boom. We've got that curve filled. Now, the other cool thing that you can do is use stencils to limit where those are created even further. So we'll say we want to use this stencil right here. Let's change our stroke mode here to one of the pressure modes. And if we start stroking in here, you can see now we're painting limited to that area where the stencil is allowing us to. All right, let's turn that material off and also turn off the stencil. Let's create a new layer real quick for the next part. And um, I think one of the more advantageous ways of using this is with a one-click solution. And what I mean by that is the fill tool. Let's turn off color tolerance for this. And this little viewport right here, if you click and drag on the name, allows you to get a quick preview of what's going to happen with that material. So right now, nothing's applied. We're just going to fill with color depth, gloss, and metalness. And you can see in the preview what it will do. So pretty handy. But now let's select one of our materials and we'll go with that bronze one again. And that's exactly what it will do. So if we click on the surface, we can fill that entire surface in. And we're also not limited to just clicking on the surface. You can fill the entire paint layer, 
the surface material or the entire object if you want. And another cool thing too is that you can paint with gradients using gradient mode. You can also apply another secondary pattern on top of this as well, which is, uh, which is interesting. Maybe not entirely desired all the time, but pretty handy to have. Let's hide this layer. We'll make one more just for this. And another thing that you can do, of course, is to completely turn off metalness. It's hard to see with this material, but it is being turned off. So there's no metalness being applied to that at all. You can also turn the gloss off if you want through the spec intensity. Or you can just turn it off right here with one of these uh, spherical icons, like so. You can turn off the color as well. And just paint depth or whatever channel you feel like painting. We can just paint the, the color channel if we want to. So you're not really limited in that kind of way. The other thing you can do is to change the different projection types. Now, cube mapping is the most preferred method because it gives better results. But you can still project from a camera. You can do cylindrical, spherical, and also just apply it to a UV map if you want to. Let's take a look at the material parameters now for one of these materials. And we have two basic types of materials, at least in my eyes. We have something that I consider more of a base material and something that has a base material but allows you to modulate the color or multiply the color depending on whatever color you have selected in the foreground. Okay, so let's take a look at the bronze one, for example. So go to the VR material editor by right clicking on one of these materials. And I have all sorts of things hidden here, but let's just take a look at what I have visible. So if we had a layer on here that was using, for example, a cavity or edges, we could control the overall cavity. It says modulator, but I say intensity. It's more like an, an intensity or percentage control. And we can also control the layer opacity for the entire layer. We can make a layer hidden. We can also expand and collapse it with this, which doesn't really take effect because I have everything hidden for the moment. And then we can also control the mapping type right here, the preferred mapping type. So when you select that material, it automatically selects that mapping type in the PBR materials control panel up here. So now let's unhide everything for this layer. With a cursor over the layer here, there's a drop down arrow. We can turn on the tick box for all of these options, which will expose everything here. Now, I'm only using four different channels for this material. I've got uh, an image map for the color or, or albedo. We have one for bump, one for spec, or gloss. Um, I, I'm using a spec image. I keep saying spec, but I really mean gloss, or the opposite of reference. So then we also have metalness. And the other three I'm not using are the mask texture, the condition mask texture, and the edge scattering texture. So what a masked texture will do is allow you to straight up just mask out an area. We use something really harsh like this, the splash area here. And if we zoom out and put that into view, you can see that we're controlling where this material is placed based off of that mask. And you can control the scale right here with this slider just by dragging it left and right. Let's just set that back to one and we'll shut that off. And what this condition mask will do is if we're using Anything that sets more of this material that we happen to be using into a cavity, an edge, flat surface, or so on, then this texture that you specify will control that and feather it out, or will affect it based off of the image that you use. And let's discuss what those effects are. So in this drop-down list next to the square, there's always more on concave, more on convex, all sorts of stuff here that are really helpful. And since we're using a sphere for this, it won't really work. So just know that that's what this parameter controls. And then we also have the edge scattering texture. And this is actually something that more or less modulates or expands out or contracts the area that the condition mask texture is doing. So you can control it a little bit more outside of just what this image does and with more than the degree and what this parameter is allowing you to do. So it gives you a little more fine control over, over that. So now the last thing I want to talk about is what these drop down lists right here are. It shows a little curved arrow pointing to the color. Well, if we click on that, it says replace. And what this replace option allows you to do is to not use or to not modulate by the color in the foreground that you have selected. So right now we're using an image, 
And since we're setting it to white, it, we're going to get exactly what that image shows. Now, if we set the color here to something else, say a green color, it will modulate the color of the image with just this color and not the color that we have set in the foreground. So we'll hit cancel on that. Now, what happens if we change this to modulate? Well, let's change this to a blue color, for example. And now change it to modulate. And you can see whatever color we have in the foreground now is the one modulating the color rather than this color swatch here. So we can change this to whatever color we want. And as I was mentioning earlier that, at least to me, there are two different types of base materials, ones that you can specify the color for and ones that have a set color. So these preview icons down here in the PBR materials panel, you can see based off of the preview which ones are the color modulated ones and which ones have their color set in stone. And so, for example, the bronze, the wood, the copper, granite, and so on, all of these have their color unmodulated and are exactly as the image that we're using in the material itself. These icons right here that have a very saturated blues, pinks, reds, orange, and green, those ones allow you to specify a color of your choosing. So that's what these icons are, are really telling you. Like, this one has an image set for color, and this one doesn't. Or maybe it does, and you can modulate it. So that's really the only difference between these preview icons. The other cool thing that you can do is have multiple layers. So let's just hit add a layer, but it automatically creates it at the top of the stack. And any of its settings are being overridden, right? So just a quick example, let's say we wanted to have some kind of paint over the bronze, all right? So we'll go with something like that bluish green color right about there. All right. And we've got that. That looks fine. But um, we need to change a few other things here. I want to set the color to modulate, which it's already at, because I have this color down here. I want to be able to specify whatever color. And I want you, once I share this material, to be able to specify whatever color. Now, the depth of the texture here, I don't want to set that at all. I just want to paint it. Uh, you know what? What the heck? We'll say our paint has a thickness of 2%. And we're going to say that the glossiness is pretty low. We'll go with about 10%. And it's not a metallic paint, so we'll turn the metalness all the way down. Now, what we do want to do is to specify a mask for this material, or the, at least this layer. So let's go ahead and set it to their splatter drip. And you'll notice that the copper underneath is also being modulated. That's because earlier I set it to modulate. So let's just say replace. And now we can paint over that bronze material with whatever color we want. And before we go any further, actually, the reason we're not seeing any depth or glossiness is because we don't have those icons turned on. So let's go click on those. And now you can see that we have the material showing up exactly as it should. So we'll set this back down to 2%. And that looks pretty good. So just very quickly, you can see that we can set up something pretty easily with different types of layered effects. And like I was saying, we can scale this up. Say we want to have bigger splatters of paint or we want to actually invert this so that way those areas that are showing up are the areas that are not showing up so there's a little drop down list next to this and all layers that allow you to bring up even more options where you can control the image with a curve and you can actually control what this curve is doing in fact so say we wanted to apply some noise to it so we'll turn this down a little bit um go down to about right here and we'll scale it down a little bit just so we can have a little bit of noise in here. And let's say we actually thought this pattern was too repeating. All right, well, let's click in this drop down list and say distort. And if we go to the noise tab here, we can control the curve for the noise rather than the curve for the image itself. Oops, let's go back to that. And now we can fine tune the actual distortion that's happening. And we can turn the degree up even. We can change the scale to make it even more so. All right, that's looks, that looks looking pretty good. And now, like I was saying, we want to invert that. So just hit invert and done. Right, so now we have our sphere here with some paint on it. And let's click on that to apply it. And let's go take a look at it. So now you can see just a really quick way to apply some paint over a metal and you know have it halfway decent looking. Anyway, that's it for this feature. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. 
Don't forget to subscribe by clicking subscribe down below. And see you in the next video.